Different places are right for different people. My name is Tuomas and at the age of 21, I moved out of my home country of Finland forever. And now that I'm here visiting for the summer, I wanted to give you the four reasons why I did that. And you might be thinking, well, wait a second, isn't Finland like a super high income country that's really safe, modern, great healthcare, great education? Like why on earth would I leave a country like this? So I want to make clear, Finland is absolutely a great country for certain people and for people in a certain stage of their life. But for other people with other priorities and in other stages of their life, like myself, I fall into this category, Finland is an absolutely terrible place to be in my opinion. So in my view, there's two kinds of people in this world. There's people who think small and there's people who think big. And just as a preface, I'm not making any judgment. Like I'm not saying small is bad and big is good. But I personally most definitely fall in the latter category. I like to think big. And in a lot of ways, like how we think is very influenced by where we live. And throughout my life, having lived in three countries, I can definitely see how that is true. So it's interesting how I've developed to be this sort of big thinker when Finland is the exact opposite of that. In Finland, it's more common to think very small, not have too much ambition, just to be happy where you are. So when I got older and as I started thinking more and more about like where I want to live, like it became more and more clear to me that Finland just doesn't match my personality. It doesn't match me. Everything is just too small here. The cities are too small. People think too small. It's not very conducive to entrepreneurship. And this is a general fact about the EU in general. So if I had these ambitions, I knew that I basically had to move and I wanted to move to a place that was more in line with the way that I Thing. I was looking for something bigger. Currently it's summer here in Helsinki and it is 19 degrees right now. So obviously right now it's okay, but the winters, <laughs> like I'm looking up some average temperatures in here in my hometown, for example, in January, the average low is minus 15 degrees. That's the average. So that means that a lot of the time it's a lot colder than that. It can get down to like minus 25, minus 30. Surely we're not meant to live in temperatures like that as humans. And I remember when I was a kid in those temperatures, like minus 30 or even colder, I would have to walk to school sometimes. And it was only like a 10 minute walk, but I literally could not walk the entire 10 minutes before going inside to warm up because like I would just start hurting so much. I literally had to walk like three minutes, go inside of like a supermarket just to warm up, walk three minutes again, go inside of like a kiosk to warm up until I finally got to my school. But yeah, in a way the summers are kind of worse actually because like the summers here, obviously like they're warm-ish, but they're like not warm enough to be like a real summer and a lot of the days in the summer like right now we've been coding our startup here in Helsinki like most days I still have to take a jacket and it's freaking middle of July at least in the winter when I come here over Christmas like I know what to expect like I'm coming here I know it's gonna be snowy and I can just like sort of brace my mind for that but in the summer you'd at least expect it to be warm enough to walk outside in a t-shirt like freaking come on so it's funny when i lived in the uk my first impression of the people the people are very open in the uk and if you are from the uk or if you've been to the uk you might be laughing right now at me saying that uk people are open because the stereotype of the uk is that they're the coldest most unsocial people in the world, especially if you come from somewhere like America. So you can just imagine if my impression of British people is that they're open, just how unopen Finnish people must be. Because in comparison, that was the case. Like it's kind of strange. In many ways, I am the stereotypical Finnish person. Like at the dinner table, I can often be the quietest person. I don't speak that much. I am very introverted in the sense. I'm just very focused on myself and my own goals and my own life. And I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly happy spending a lot of time just on my own, just focusing on what I'm doing. But there's still something about being in an environment where people are the opposite of that, that then makes me more open. And somehow like I just enjoy being in those environments more, even though it is a bit hypocritical because I'm not really like that myself. It's, it, yeah, it's kind of weird.
but I digress. Okay, there's other things about just in general people's attitudes. People have more this attitude of like, oh, what if? Like, oh, you need to be safe. Like, get a stable job. People are most concerned about safety. There's not as much of a culture of like failure is okay. Another thing that I like about the US, despite all of the problems that the US has, by the way, is that the culture of entrepreneurship is just much bigger. Whereas in Finland and in many other places around Europe, it's sort of the opposite. It's sort of like if you fail, then there's sort of a stigma around that. And I just don't agree with that mindset at all. So in case you don't know, I live in Dubai. And in case you don't know, yeah. But I'm not against taxes, like in principle. I understand that in most countries, unless you happen to be a golf state that just happens to win the oil lottery, you sort of need tax revenue. The way I view taxes is that I view the taxes that I have to pay as sort of like a subscription to access the totality of the things that you get from living in that place. For example, if I was to live in California, I'd have to pay maybe like, I don't know, 40, 45% tax or something like that. But then I look at what would I get? Well, I would get great weather. What else would I get? I would get access to an amazing tech ecosystem if I was to live in the Bay Area, for example, which right now for my goals, because I'm building a tech startup, would be highly useful. Whereas in Finland, what do you get? Well, you get terrible weather, you don't get any exciting cities that are interesting to live in, in my opinion. And for all that, you have to pay 60% tax. Like for me, that subscription price is not worth the services and it's not worth the things that I get. For a lot of people who value, you value nature, if you like all of these things, if you like a more quiet lifestyle, it might be perfectly worth it for you to pay Finnish taxes. So is Finland a terrible country? No, of course not. Finland is right for certain people and not right for certain people. Let me know in the comments down below where you live right now. What is the ideal place for you? Start making plans to see how you could move yourself to a location like that. Because in my opinion, life is too short to live in a location that is not right for you. But given what I said, you might be actually surprised to hear that having lived in London for four years, which should technically be a very exciting big city, very aligned with me, that was also a place that I didn't end up liking that much. And I also just ended up leaving forever. And actually in this video right here, I explain all the reasons why I did that. So if you're interested in hearing about that, then I recommend you watch this video next.